Welcome to Son of the Most High Channel. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I'm Brother Jedaniah, and I appreciate y'all tuning in to my channel. Let us return to our original heritage and culture of the Second Covenant in Yahusha. Hallelujah. What's going on, fam? You know, this topic here uh, has been known, brothers and sisters, but it hasn't really been put together in such a way that we can just see it. You know what I mean? So we are going to just take a little bit more time to look at this relationship between Yahweh, Yahusha, the angels, and father, mother, and children, as seen in the heavens above. So right here in the very beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and we see that this word is a plural word Elohim or some say Elohim and this is a plural word and there's been a lot of controversy concerning this particular word why is it a plural word when it's only the most high right the creator well, we need to learn how the Most High operates, and He has an order of operations that He made above. So let's drop down here to 26, because brothers and sisters, if you can't get this right, the rest of the book is not going to make sense, or, or at least Yahusha's role and position is not going to make sense. And I'm trying to help y'all further your studies and further your, your mindset into this image that the Father has made above as seen right here below with us. So right here, it says in Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish, the sea, the fowl, the air, the cattle, the earth, creeping things. So Elohim, again, plural, created man in his own image. In the image of man created he him, male and female created he them. So this is another clue right here where he says, uh, in the image of Elohim created he him then he breaks it down to male and female created he them so this man is male and female now remember the woman was taken out of the man when the Most High took one of Adam's ribs out of him and created the woman so she's directly of and directly out of the man. And the two are one, brothers and sisters. This is your evidence right here where he's saying, created he him, male and female, created he them. And this is why when a man leaves his mother and father, he finds his wife and the two become one flesh. So in the same sense, in the same image that's above where there's Yahuwah who directly begot Yahusha out of him, just like he did the man and the woman, he, he directly begot his helper, whom he called his son. His help meet is his son under full obedience and submission to the Most High directly connected to 
the Most High, brothers and sisters. This is who the Most High used to get his work done. So he put his son, he put all his will inside of his son to get everything accomplished in full strict obedience. And that's the same role that the woman plays, the man and the woman play down here, which he gave Adam dominion and he created the helpmate. And she's supposed to help him with all dominion. All things that the father put in the man to accomplish on the earth. She's supposed to help him do that just as Yahusha is over the man to accomplish all the father's will in the earth. And uh, Yahusha is also in charge of accomplish, accomplishing his will above in the heavens as well. So let's read right here. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. So remember, the man and the woman are one flesh when they married. They're joined together. But they were one from the very beginning when the father took the one man out of the womb of man. She is still him. Y'all understand? They're still man. So the same sense, when Yahweh begot Yahusha, a piece of himself, to be his helpmeet or his helper, uh, Yahusha is, uh, up, is of the Most High and is the Most High. They're one. They are one, brothers and sisters. I'm just trying to bring everything together. So y'all can understand uh, the Messiah in the Old Testament. If you haven't seen that playlist, go check that playlist out now that you have further understanding of the relationship between Yahweh, Yahusha, and the man and the woman. The image of the Most High seen down here. So let's continue on. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, remember, the word was was used to create everything. But remember, that still is the most high creating everything. It's still the most high, y'all. That's the same sense um, when... Uh, when someone sees another man's chaste wife and, and her good manners and her and her knowledge and wisdom and everything is, is lining up with the Most High, and they'll look at the husband and be pleased, you know, and, and praise him for her. You know what I'm saying? You know, according to scriptures, you know what I mean? So... In the same sense, when you look at all that Yahusha has been commanded and, and, and begotten to do on behalf of the Most High, all the praise and esteem and everything still goes to the throne, to the Most High's throne room. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So that image is right here as Yahusha is like the mate of the Most High. As woman is the mate of the man down here. And the woman is in that submissive, obedient role. Now let's look at this other part. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So, the Mosai put the life in Yahusha. And he created the angels. Then he created the heavens and the earth and, and, and man and woman and all the animals. That's because the Most High put everything in him to accomplish all his will. 
that he may be the expressed image of the Father as seen by everyone. So, uh, like the scripture said, no man have seen the Father save the Son. So you ever, if you thought you was dealing with the Father, you was dealing with the Son, but you was dealing with the Father, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because remember, the two are one. Regardless if you're seeing Yahweh Shah, you're seeing the Father. Regardless if you're seeing your wife, you're seeing the husband. Y'all see the parallel there? The image of Almighty Yah from the very, very beginning. Hallelujah. So you got the angels as there as the children, the sons of the Most High above in full submission to both Yahweh and Yahusha accomplishing all Yahweh's will. Whether that angel comes down in a burning bush speaking to, um, you know, the, the Most High will speak through that particular angel like he did to Moses. It was an angel, but it was the most high talking. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Or it was Yahusha talking through him. But still, everything was accredited to the most high. At the end of the day, there's no one else beside him that can go off and create. Or, or like, like, let me give you an example. Like Yahusha. You can't just take Yahusha. And, 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 or Yahusha just can't go off. And create another heaven and earth next door to the most highest heaven and earth and create his own messengers and create another uh, another creation of man and woman and and do his own thing outside of the most high because he's directly begotten of the most high he can't do that he's a piece of the most high forever that's why he can say that i am you know he can boast that i am because he's from everlasting like it says, I'm going to come right back to this. Let's go to Revelations very quick. <clears throat> Where he says, I am Alpha and Omega. And again, I am Alpha and Omega. And then he tells Abraham, I mean, um, the Pharisees, he says, before Abraham was, I am. And they wanted to stone him. Because they didn't understand who he was and where he come from, brothers and sisters. He's from everlasting. He's direct peace, directly begotten out of the Most High, like Adam, or like Eve was directly begotten out of the out of man. And that's how the image, that's how we were created in His image, and we have children like, 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 uh. The Most High put life inside of Yahusha to create the angels. So, guess what? That life, let's go back to John. And we're looking at the copying of the image above, down here below, brothers and sisters. So, right here it says, in him was life. So, now you got to look at the man. Okay, the man has the seed of life. He has sperm that swims. It's alive. And the woman has a dormant egg. So the man has to put his seed of life in the woman that she may create the life, that it may be created inside of her and, and nourished and nurtured and, and brought to, to the birth. And then she gives birth to that new creation. Y'all see the similarities of what the Most High is doing with Yahusha, spiritually speaking? So now you have us having to be reborn through Yahusha. We have to be rebirthed into a new form through Yahusha whom the Father put life in him to accomplish all his will. Brothers and sisters. So let's go back over here. Genesis. 
So when you go right back here, you can understand why this is plural. He's operating through a special order and image. He set that image above so that it'll be also below. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. So it's still all the most high, y'all. Regardless if it was Yahusha or the angels doing this, that, and the other. It, the buck stops at the throne room always. Same down here where even though both of them were given dominion, Adam is the head of that dominion and the woman is her, his helmet. But remember, she did something, didn't she? And, and caused herself to be under a little bit more authority of Adam than, than probably, you know, it was before. Because they had dominion over all of this together as one team. So Yahweh and Yahusha is one team. And let's go over to uh, chapter 2. And we're just going to look at this just right here uh, where Adam is put to sleep. The most I took one of his ribs, closed up his flesh, and the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken from man made he one man and brought her to the man. She shall be called one man because she was taken out of the man. And Yahuwah took Yahusha out of himself. That life might be created through him. She was taken out that life might be created in her. That there would be a birthing just as Yah who shot is used to for the rebirth of our of, of that new man and new woman that we are to come I mean to to uh, that we are to become so let's go to the next chapter all right so we know that the woman Listen to this serpent, and she bit of the fruit of lies. And uh, it says that she would end up dying, right? Or um, man would die if they ate of that fruit of that tree. So the serpent said, you shall surely not die. So here's the lie. But right here, some of you may be taught that this is a lie too, but this is the truth. For Elohim doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as Elohim's, knowing good and evil. So where have we heard this before? Well, you have to go to Psalms 82. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's go to Psalms 82. Just want to show y'all something right quick. I have said you are Elohim's, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So we know also Yahusha says, It is written, I have said you are Elohim's. And, and that points back to this, right? But this points back to what? What we just read. This points back to Genesis. So, where where else he have said? Matthew's, in, in, you know, the New Testament wasn't even there yet. 
when, when this was written. So yes, you have to go back to Genesis to get understanding. Genesis chapter 3. Right here, again. Your eyes shall be open and you shall be as Elohim's knowing good and evil. Now let's drop down to get the confirmation. Verse 22. And Yahuwah Elohim said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. That's the confirmation right there. And now at least he put forth his hand and took also the tree of life and eat and live forever. The most I kicked him out of the garden. But he has become as Elohim's. The most I confirmed that right here. Let me read it again. And Yahuwah Elohim said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. That's the confirmation of Psalms 82. And I believe it's John 10. Where the Messiah says, Is it not written? I think it's somewhere around here. I could be wrong. Yeah. Y'all shall answer them, is it not written in your law? So he's saying in the law, I said you are Elohim's. So we know that the first five books is the law, right? Yeah, if he called them Elohim's unto whom the word of Elohim came and the scripture cannot be broken. So, they were saying that he was blaspheming because he said, I am the son of Yah. Well, wait a minute. Aren't we son of Yah's and daughters of Yah as well? That's what he's trying to get. He's trying to make that point. Look, I've already said you are Elohim's, but you shall, you know, but you shall die like a man. Through um, David, but I also said it in the beginning in the five books of the law which is Genesis three and twenty two and there you have it so now y'all can see this order of things Yahweh Yahusha angels man woman child y'all see the order hallelujah now you can understand no matter what yahusha is doing it goes back to the throne room brothers and sisters no matter what the angels is doing it goes back to the throne room Man, whatever your wife is doing, it goes back to you. That's why you can cancel her vows. That's why you can divorce her. I mean, she could separate herself from from you, but I haven't read to where uh, she can divorce you, but she, she can separate from you and reconcile herself later on back to you. But uh, the children, whatever's going on with your children goes back to the man, to the husband. Now remember, the wife was punished, right? Let's see. What is the one I'm looking for right here? And thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. Now remember, they had to be together, and Adam was the head, but she was the helpmate of him. Mm-hmm. 
But now you have this extra stuff added because of her sin against the father, you know, sorrow and conception. Multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. You will deliver in pain. And your desire shall be to thy husband how you can, whatever your husband wants and whatever your husband needs, you are to be in full submission to your husband. That's why it, Paul says, wives, obey your husbands. He shall rule over thee. He is the leadership. The buck stops with him. And we know that that order is being messed up right now. By Hashitan. Big time. But I'm not going to get into all of that. Uh, we know some people out there talking about. You know what's happened to the woman. And how she's become so like a man now trying to play his role and then they're pushing that all over the uh, TV and the movies and everything but anyway let's get back to this the life let's go back to John life was put in to Yahusha right And we see this parallel. Why this thing won't change? I don't know. Uh, let me try this again. Okay, here we go. Just a little slow. Okay, let's get back to this. Life. In him was life. So let's get back to the parallel of life being in Yahusha and the rebirth. So... When the Most High took his son, now remember the, the order, Yahweh, Yahusha, then angels, then man, woman, kids, life put in Yahusha, life, life of man, the, the seed of life put in the woman. So the Most High sacrificed Yahusha on that tree right and that soldier pierced him with the rod and the blood and the water spilt out okay so this is the most high sacrificing Yahusha to make that blood covenant of promise of the second covenant for our eternal souls, right? For us to be reborn through Yahusha, right? Y'all seeing this? So the man takes his virgin wife for the first time. And this is how precious your womb is, ladies, women, females. This is how precious and cold dash and set apart your womb is. Listen to the parallel. The image above is right here on earth. The man puts, takes his rod, pierces your womb, breaks the hymen, and the, and the blood spills, right? And during the act of copulation, waters spills out as well. In a bond, a covenant bond, an eternal bond is created when this happens, brothers and sisters. Between the man and the woman, this eternal bond. And your children are Kodesh and set apart through this eternal bond. 
Y'all see. Y'all see the relationship between Yahuwah and Yahusha now. Even though Yahusha can be called Yahuwah, come in the flesh, because he's from everlasting directly. The woman can be called the man, or uh, because she's directly from him. And that's why it says man throughout the scriptures, but it's also talking about the woman too. Though it's mentioning man, but she has her position in place just as Yahushua has his position in place with the Most High to be into full submission to Almighty Yahweh. She is to be in full submission to her husband. And there you have it, brothers and sisters. So, our children need to be taught this image of the Most High and the order of it and Yahusha's relationship and what he done and how it correlates to our relationships here on earth and how you know um, in a sense a woman sacrifices her womb to bring forth life y'all hear what I'm saying it's like a reminder of what's the final one the final sacrifice you know before it happened it was a reminder of what was coming and now that that final sacrifice is done now we're waiting on the rebirth to be rebirthed through Yahusha when he returns now, some of us going to be caught up and, and rebirthed, but some of us going to be brought back in the land in the flesh to repopulate uh, the land of the Most High. And then at the final, you know, when it's all really all over, the rest of us will be, will join each other in our new bodies. The rest of Yahshua will be rebirthed at the end with all the other Gentiles that make it will all be rebirthed on two occasions. When Yahusha comes, who is Yahuwah? All the steam goes to the throne. And at the end of all things, in the second regeneration or rebirth into a new species of Shemayim to be just like the messengers. Let's see, that's Matthews 22 and 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the messengers of Elohim and Shemayim. So now when you see Elohim here, you you know, you'll see the order. Yahuwah, Yahusha, angels. But are as the messengers of Elohim. Yahuwah and Yahusha. But are as the angels of Yahuwah and Yahusha. Remember the two are one. They are as the man and woman down here one flesh joined at the hip or just <laughs> just joined forever but right here when Yahusha says I am the Elohim of Abraham and the Elohim of Isaac and the Elohim of Jacob and Elohim is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. So, Yahusha can easily say, or we can easily say that, 
Yahusha is Yahweh. Now, you got a clearer, a little bit clearer understanding, about sisters, right from the very beginning of the book. Of the book. So go back and watch the playlist. Yahusha in the Old Testament. Take your time. Go over all of it with this deeper understanding of the image of Almighty Yahweh above, with his family above. It's the same image with the man's family below. And the duties and the roles of um, the man is, is, is as Elohim, as the Most High. And the duties of the woman is as Yahusha. And the duties of your children is as the messengers. You know, right here, where Moses, where the Most High said unto Moses, See, I have made thee an Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. I have made thee this. He didn't say, uh, oh, this is an example. The most I said unto Moses, see, I have made thee a Elohim to Pharaoh. And Aaron, thy brother, shall be thy prophet. This goes right back to Genesis chapter 1. Look, the man has become as one of us. Elohim's mighty ones not that anyone is taking the most high's place he, he has his dominion he has his authoritative headship over all creation but he knew he needed a perfect sacrifice which was Yahusha to come down fulfill all of his will under full authority and commandment of the Father, and then sacrifice himself by being pierced in the side with the blood and the water spilled out, and he, and he gave up his spirit. And we see the man and the woman and her sacrifice. She's pierced. And she gives birth to new life. And the same will be with Yahusha when he gives birth to us through the second covenant established. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. Thank y'all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And give me a thumbs up. And definitely share this video. Y'all know where to leave those comments. But email me if you have any questions. And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah.